Well, folks, the great intellectual lights over at The View, well, they had some comments on my opposition to the morality of the Barbie movie. It was wise, as always. The latest in the continuing fallout from me not liking Barbie. Apparently, this is just an endless national story, and I'm confused as to why, uh, except I'm not confused. As I mentioned a couple of days ago on the show, the reality is that I stepped upon the idol. You're not supposed to step upon the idol. You're not supposed to mention that Barbie is a bad movie. You're not supposed to mention that radical feminism, is, r- radical feminism is a complete failure. Not supposed to mention any of that because the idolatry of these movies, of these cultural totems, must be complete, and you must be made to bow before them. Uh, this presumably is why the great intellect over at The View were uh, decrying my specific critique of the Barbie movie. So as always, I am perfectly willing to go on The View. Not only am I perfectly willing, I'm perfectly eager to go on The View. It has been several years since I've suggested that I come on The View. And uh, yet I'm shocked. I've never received an invite. Now, I know for a fact why that is. I mean, I'm friendly with Megan McCain, who is on the show for years. She routinely asked the producers if I could come on the show. And they routinely said, no, I wonder why. Hmm. In any case, Whoopi Goldberg, leading light, and, uh, and a person who believes that apparently Hitler was not a racist. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg had some views about panning the woke Barbie movie. It's a movie about a doll. <laughs> I, uh, I, I thought y'all would be happy. She has no genitalia, so there's no <laughs> sex involved. Ken has no genitalia, so he can't be doing... It's a doll movie. And you know who... I, I, the kids know it's colorful and it's Barbie. They haven't lived through what the adults have lived through. So when they're seeing this movie, that's not how they're looking at it. The kids are looking at it as a Barbie movie. You guys, I want you all to tell your daughters why you're not taking them to see the Barbie movie. <laughs> I'm so taken by some of these right-wing men who have all these thoughts on masculinity. Like, somehow the Barbie movie is going to make them feel emasculated. No, caring so much about it is honestly the most emasculating thing I could think about. Wasn't that Ben Shapiro? Because if you're sitting there and you flipped it on a head and it was... He looks like he should be in the Barbie movie. Oh, in in what capacity, Whoopi? Uh, that's, that's, That's a strange... I look like I should be in the Barbie movie. Because of my stunning Ryan Gosling like good looks, like what well, what are we talking about here? Okay, so just a few comments on this. A few comments on this. Number one, the insane gaslighting by people like Whoopi Goldberg is amazing. So they made Barbie into a cultural moment. It's a cultural moment, and the movie is stacked with politics. Every single review, left and right, points out the movie is stacked with politics. They play this dumbass game. It's a really ridiculous clown nose on clown nose off game. Well. It's so political. It's so important. Everyone should see it. It has such important things to say about the state of modern womanhood. And then we're like, yeah, what it has to say is garbage and stupid and wrong and bad for girls. And then they're like, it's just a movie about a doll. It's just a movie about a doll. Why are you so upset about a movie about a doll? I don't know. Why are you so upset that I'm upset about a movie about a doll? Because it's not just a movie about a doll, you idiots, obviously. You're really liars. I mean, you know that it's not a movie about a doll only. It's a movie about men and about women and about feminism and about the patriarchy. You know who will tell you that? Greta Gerwig, who made the damn thing. You know who will tell you that? Every member of the media, ever, including Whoopi Goldberg. So but th- this whole routine, oh, well, I don't even know why you're so upset about this. I don't even know why you care. Okay, first of all, the movie's bad. I'm upset I wasted two, mon- two, two hours of my life on the movie. But what really is upsetting is the gaslighting, is the lying. You don't get to say, look at this super important thing. And then I notice it. I'm like, yeah, I think it's bad. And they're like, it's not even important at all. Why are you even noticing it? It's so irritating. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, Alyssa Farrah Griffin. Okay, so I know Alyssa. Okay, Alyssa used to work in Mike Pence's office. The first time I visited the White House, Alyssa was an aide to Mike Pence. And she was a fan of the show, okay? (laughs) And I'm only making this personal because Alyssa decided to make this personal. So let me point out here, when we are talking about, you know, emasculation and all the rest, you know what is kind of emasculating? Moving from Mike Pence's office over to The View, where you get to be the designated conservative that all of your friends your pseudo friends dump on every single day and where you win points of favor and they pat you on the head and give you little Scooby treats if you say the right thing. As far as feeling emasculated on a personal level, I just had my fourth kid, man. Like, give me a break. I, 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 <laughs> my reproductive success has been assured at this point, folks. I'm not, I'm not particularly concerned about the emasculation charge from Alyssa Farrah Griffin. By the way, again, you guys, I noticed that you spent a lot of your airtime on this. So, uh, yeah, obviously it's important enough for you to comment on. Here's the overall take. The overall take, again, is that for a group of wine moms who are daytime drunk watching the Barbie movie by themselves crying at America Ferreira, whining about being a woman, and then they go on The View, and then they talk about it, 
And then you mentioned the movie's bad. This is idolatry. You, you must never, ever, ever speak ill of the Greta Gerwigs of the world. You must never speak ill of a movie as important as this. Tonight. And if you do, then they will pretend that the real story is that, why are you even, know, why are, it's, a, it's a movie about a doll. By the way, America First Barbie speech apparently took two days and 30 to 50 takes to film, which is incredible because it sucks. I'm just going to point out, it's bad. It's a bad take. It, it, 30 to 50 takes? We're filming Citizen Kane here? 30 to 50 takes for America Ferrer to give this whiny speech. Apparently, Greta Gerwig said that when she gave that speech, everyone on the set was crying. And the men, the women, they were all crying. Uh, yes, only the most self-absorbed people in the world would cry over a speech as pathetic, dull, and, and honestly shallow as, as that particular speech. Even with the one-year anniversary of overturning Roe versus Wade, there's a lot of work to be done. In fact, you might say there's more work to be done now than ever because there is more work that is capable of being done. Abortion is still the leading cause of death among infants in the United States and on planet Earth. Sadly, with the abortion pill accounting for over 50% of all abortions, babies' lives are at a greater risk now than ever. Thankfully, you and I can do something about it thanks to our partners at Preborn's Network of Clinics. Preborn is the largest provider of free ultrasounds in the United States. They offer love, support, and compassion to hurting women, helping them make the right choice. By letting a mom see and hear her baby on ultrasound, the child's chance at life is doubled. Preborn clinics provide moms who choose life with maternity and baby clothes, diapers, car seats, counseling, and much more. All of those services, up to two years of assistance, are provided free of charge. All of this so that mommy will have the baby. Join me on my mission to save 17,000 babies from abortion. One ultrasound is just 28 bucks. A $140 donation gives five babies a chance at life. A $15,000 donation covers the cost of an ultrasound machine and saves countless babies' lives for years to come. All gifts, tax deductible. We are the answer to saving lives. Donate by dialing pound 250, say keyword baby. That's pound 250 baby or go to preborn.com slash Ben. That's preborn.com slash Ben. That's the most important thing you're going to do today or probably any other day. If you are hiring, you're probably dealing with economic uncertainty. Now more than ever, it's important to hire the right people faster and more efficiently to keep those overall costs down. Thankfully, ZipRecruiter is a hiring partner focused on you and your needs. From pricing to technology, everything ZipRecruiter does is for you. Right now, you can try them for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. ZipRecruiter smart technology identifies the best matches for your job and lets you invite candidates you really want to apply to your job before other businesses can snag them. I love how their pricing is actually really, really straightforward. You can stick to your budget. No surprises. Hire the best with the help of a partner all about you and your business with ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within day one. Just go to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. We've been using ZipRecruiter for years to get our great employees. You should do the same. Helps you sift through all those resumes. And if you're looking for a job, ZipRecruiter is a great place to go to look for your next job. Go to ZipRecruiter dot com slash daily wire try it out for free zip recruiter remains the smartest way to hire again go check them out right now there's a reason four out of five employers who post on zip recruiter get a quality candidate within the very first day time for a quick thing i like and then a thing that i hate so things that i like uh, i will admit that i am laughing about the um a santa barbara suburb that is very upset about somebody moving in prince harry and Meghan markle according to the new york post when locals in the secluded Santa Barbara, California enclave of Hope Ranch heard that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle might be keen on leaving nearby Montecito to buy a home in the exclusive suburb, they didn't roll out the welcome mat. A Hope Ranch realtor told the Post that nine months after the rumors were reported, their office continues to field calls from concerned longtime residents who fear the couple and their security team will disturb the peace in the quiet community where houses go for as much as $22.5 million. People are not happy. That's the word around town. They want them to stay in Montecito and not be drawing that kind of attention up to Hope Ranch, another realtor and Santa Barbara native confirmed to the Post. So uh, first of all, they all deserve it. All of them deserve each other. All of the rich and wealthy Santa Barbara residents who are very into the libdom, um, I hope that they enjoy their new neighbors. The we don't want attention. Please, please stop paying us attention. South Park characters of Harry and Meghan who are quickly running out of things to make them prominent. Uh, I know there's been a, a lot of speculation about the possibility that the couple breaks up. There's been a lot of that sort of page six speculation about that possibility, which they have kids. That'd be sad. Any divorce involving kids would be really, really sad. It would not be surprising given exactly the course of this marriage and who Meghan Markle has proved herself to be, unfortunately. Okay, time for a quick thing that I hate. So crime in left-wing areas is now so bad that even CNN has to cover it. So yesterday, CNN senior national correspondent Kyung La reported on crime in San Francisco real retail shops. The report is pretty stunning. Richie Greenberg walked into a San Francisco Walgreens when he saw in the frozen food section this. Chains, heavy chains that went from padlock to padlock on both sides of the doors. And this was bizarre, something I'd never seen before. This is just more icing on the cake telling us 
that rampant crime is is has become a, a regular part of life. So typical that in the 30 minutes we were at this Walgreens, we watched three people, including this man, steal. Did that guy pay? Did that guy pay? He didn't pay. Unbelievable. So Law said, hit more than a dozen times a day when thieves tried to clean out ice cream and frozen burritos, workers grew so frustrated they resorted to the chains. They were ordered down by corporate because of the negative messaging, but Walgreens isn't the only retailer impact in San Francisco. You have to ask an employee for help. At this store, frozen food is controlled with a cable lock, fake eyelashes locked behind plexiglass, along with lotion and nail polish at another grocery store, $14 bags of coffee under lock and key. Amazing stuff from San Francisco. So again, wonderful job, left-wing governance, ruining some of America's most beautiful cities. And um, you know what? You get what you vote for. Alrighty, guys, the rest of the show continues right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be jumping into the mailbag. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Click that link in the description and join us.